Uh, my name is Arash Shajdani. I'm leading a robotics laboratory at the Italian Institute of Technology. Uh, the, the research we conduct is basically on main different categories, uh, which on the most left we do human robot collaboration, and I will mostly talk about this uh, this morning. We do lots of teleoperation, assistive robotics, power augmentation, and also understanding human motor behavior to be able to, to make our robots behave just like us. Nevertheless, today we are here to talk about cobots. As we know, robotics technology, collaborative robotics technology, is becoming more and more promising. It's contributing to the competitiveness of the European industry, and also it's helping us to reshore production. And uh, companies, uh, robotics companies, as well as all the uh, pr producers, are more interested in the collaborative robotic technology because these, first of all, they are not replacing humans. They're just keeping the humans in the loop and making the, let's say, the production more efficient. Nevertheless, the state of art at the moment in the collaborative robotics technology is that robots and humans coexist. It means that the robots are performing their task, adapting to the environment, and humans minding their own business. No. So at most, this will happen, which is the case that when the human is getting closer to the robot, the, the robot tries to avoid it because of the safety issues, which is really important. But we don't want to do this. We want, just like people, robots and humans engage and start doing physical activities, physical things that might be helpful for the production. A lot of examples in logistics exist, and I want to tell you how we can actually perform and rethink logistics, because it's an area that has the good poten potential to go lean. One of the most sensitive topics that we are actually facing in Europe is work-related musculoskeletal disorders. These disorders that uh, are actually happening in the working environments, they cause the European Union 240 billion euros a year. I know, I know that most of your companies have faced these issues. And collaborative robotics can be one solution to this, not only helping you to produce better, also helping you to cut down on these, uh, let's say, extra costs. So one of the things I would like to, produce, uh, to introduce to you is how we can use collaborative robots to also adapt to people while performing the tasks. So imagine that you're performing a task with a robot. If the robot can understand what you're doing and can basically estimate your states in real time without knowing you, it can help you to do your task in the most ergonomic, efficient, and productive way. Just let me give you an example. Of course, it's just a very simple exam example. By looking at the pose of the human and some, some sort of basically basic knowledge, we can, together with the robot, you can hold the, hold the weight in such a way that it minimizes the loading on all your joints. So basically, the, the, uh, on the right side and on the left side, the robot and human are performing, just picking something together and putting it on the, uh, at the, at the on the ground. But on the left side, the, the robot was adapting to what you need, and it was minimizing all the pressure on all your joints. Of course, it's not only on the co-carrying, which is one of the biggest, let's say, um, tasks that we do together in, in logistics. It can be also in terms of co-manipulating. For instance, if you have, if you have a robot that can, can understand and by looking at you, what, what is the best place of the task for you, which means that it minimizes the effect of a, a load. It's imagine two kilogram payload that you're supposed to, to use it for hours a day and for weeks and, and years. And in the meantime, you're supposed to manipulate it. So the robot, by knowing your dynamics and kinematics, and bring you in, in such a configuration that you can see some of the um, the um, activities and it, it minimizes basically all the effort. So you're working longer, healthier, and safer, and more productive because you're you can do this task much better. A very simple other example is just um, a handover. So when we we actually somebody tells us just could you pass me that thing? Imagine in industry in logistics, people are passing things together uh, thousands of times per week. You know, robots can understand what is the best and fastest and the most healthy way of passing these objects to you. On the right side, the robot is giving you uh, in the most ergonomic way, which minimizes again the loading and actually um, makes you keep the load in the most healthier way. And it actually, you can see here, it decreases over 90% of your loading. It's the same task, but with more intelligent on top. We actually, uh, at, at the moment, um, and, and that, in that video you saw we had a sensory system, but we replaced it with a vision. So through deep learning techniques, what we could do is also we added some, some level of adaptation to that. So the robots can also distinguish tools. In this video, you can see the robot, when you're showing the tool to the, to the robot, the robot, through some deep learning techniques, looks at your poster and picks the right tool and provides it to you. And you're supposed to do some manipulation. 
On the bottom right, you see the loading. So it's some example. You see the, the, the circle is red. It means that you have lots of loading. It's two kilogram uh, tool. And the robot immediately reconfigures and brings it to, to, to the most, let's say, efficient way. If you change hands, the robot can actually online understand if you're right-handed, left-handed, if you're moving in the space, um, or if you're basically any kind of adaptivity that you need uh, that the robot requires to adapt to you and the task, it is done by the robot. When the task is achieved, so basically you can just give the message to the robot telling, okay, now I'm done. You, you pick another tool, it's a, it's a blue drill this time, and the robot recognizes your tool and picks the other object. So this is through deep learning and optimization techniques that we've developed. You can show, you can give all these examples to the robot and the robot can learn them so everything will be efficient. You just show the tool to the robot and the robot will bring it for you and provide it to, to you to, in the most productive and ergonomic way. This was the idea we presented with my team in KUKA Innovation. KUKA, as you know, is the second largest producer of the robots, and we won. It was the best innovative idea of the year, and we won actually 20,000 euros for our research. One other example is cyclic movements. For instance, um, the robots can learn while performing some new tasks. In here, it's really dynamic. It, robots, as you know, they are either super rigid or soft. But sometimes you need to be just like humans to be able to, to dynamically tune when it's just like this task, dynamically tune when, when to push, when to pull, when to be stiff, when to be rigid. Here, the robot is actually learning all the tasks, dynamics, uh, let's say, kinematics, trajectories, forces. And at some point in the third graph from the top, it's the fatigue of the person. When the fatigue reaches a certain level, the robot says, okay, you're under a lot of pressure. Let me take it from here. And the robot produces everything for you because it has learned everything already. And you can see the second plot is your effort, which drops to zero. But you need to be there because human, it's a dual task and human needs to supervise it. Another example is polishing, pushing forces, and all these things that usually you know, it requires your intelligence to know what part to polish and what not. But let the robot produce the force for you, which is hundreds of newtons, which is really tough. So the robot learns the forces, and, and, but knows to be normal to the surface. So it, it gives you the ability to steer it around. But this is, the robot is the one that's producing the force for you and making you uh, to work happier. Um, another example of collaborative robots is not always physically closely collaborating. So imagine there are some tasks that the robot needs to be in a remote environment, and this is some sort of interaction, which the interaction between the human or, and robot is remotely controlled. You can think of working with large payloads. If you imagine in the logistics you have like hundreds of kilograms, even if you have the safest robot, something goes wrong, that large payload will hurt you. So, or working in some dangerous environment. So we have developed so many um, interfaces um, to be able to, you know, usually these interfaces were so simple. So you could just monitor and, uh, and move, um, let's say, position control robots, rigid robots. But here, interfaces that we have, the robots are exactly behaving like you. So if you're stiffening up your arm, the ro robot becomes stiff. If you're compliant, if you want to take care of a patient, if you want to grasp a strawberry or take a very delicate object, the robots will behave the same. Just an illustrative example of just basically to, to show that everything is changing on time as the human is performing. Of course, we're giving some feedback to the person through some, some, some uh, sensors that you can see here. To conclude, um, as I was mentioning, um, n we are, it's not really nice to only ask collaborative robots to to do the task for you, to always adapt to the task variations. We need to also bring the, to understand how we can also adapt to the persons working with the, with the robots. And this, uh, this has been actually under investigation a lot in the, in the industry, but people have been looking only at the kinematics, for instance. In, in logistics, people say, if you do this, it's non-ergonomic, and you cannot do this. But we are saying, no, this is not correct, because, for instance, if I put my hands here, everything becomes ergonomic, because I can use the environment. And this environment is the robot. The robots can help you to make your non-ergonomic way of doing task very ergonomic and vice versa. So if, if you think everything was ergonomic in certain postures, some extra forces can, can, can apply to you and you, you can become immediately non-ergonomic. And this will bring a lot of cost and, and, and lost production. There's also a lot of uh, interest in bringing exoskeletons, you know, these big uh, wearable things that you can, you can use them in the industry. They're extremely nice, extremely fine, but the, the, the at the moment, the topic is really hard because uh, it's 
the, the state of art is this. You usually wear these like uh, 10 kilogram, 20 kilogram exoskeletons and you move around. You're adding a lot of load instead of offloading. So that's why collaborative robots with intelligent behaviors can, can be your partner, follow you, and lets you do the task in the most uh, efficient way. Here's my team, actually some uh, postdocs and PhD students that work with me and uh, some of the European projects we've been working on. And thank you very much.